Hey there everyone, we're going to wrap up our look at the Cold War by talking about how communism fell apart in Europe in the 1980s and early 1990s. So by the end of the video, you should be able to uh, say what the causes of the fall of communism in Europe actually were and explain the events that went along with the collapse of communism, mostly in the Soviet Union, but also in the satellite nations of Poland and East Germany. And we'll talk in very broad uh, terms about some of the other satellite countries and how they uh, transitioned from communism to free market economy in the uh, 80s and 90s. Also be able to identify or define the Berlin Wall, the Solidarity Movement, Mikhail Gorbachev, and the policies of Glasnost and Perestroika. So what happened to the Soviet Union? It was pretty powerful, obviously, and then uh, as of 1991, it ceases to exist. Well, after World War II, things in the Soviet Union were actually pretty good. The economy was strong because of all the production and industrialization that had ramped up during World War II. It was sort of similar to what happened in the United States, really. And then you begin to see some technological advances take place in the Soviet Union, whereas before they had been pretty backwards in that regard. Uh, the most visible example of that would be the Soviet space program. They were the first country to launch uh, a man-made object into space. That was Sputnik 1, the satellite you see in the picture there, uh, in 1957. And they were ahead of the United States in most of the space race through the 1960s. The big difference was they never actually made it to the moon, but they did put the first man in space, the first person to orbit the Earth, the first woman in space, the first person to leave the vehicle during orbit. You know, all of those things were actually done by the Soviets before they were done by the Americans, but we won the race to the moon later on. But anyway, eventually uh, the Soviet Union is going to weaken. Collective agriculture, that uh, system where everybody worked on these government-owned farms, it didn't end up working very well, and it got to the point in some cases where there were food shortages in the Soviet Union. Even though they had tons of land and tons of people to work that land, production was just not good enough. And so people were starving in many cases, and the economy began to suffer as a result. Satellite nations weren't very happy. They had never wanted to really be part of this uh, Soviet sphere in many cases. They were just forced to be after uh, the Soviets occupied them at the end of World War II. So you have some uh, attempted revolts, such as the Hungarian Revolt in 1956 and the uh, Czechoslovakia's attempt to um, cast off some Soviet influence in the 1960s, both of which were suppressed by the Soviet government uh, themselves. But one of the biggest things that weakened them was when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan in 1979. They invaded in order to um, keep Afghanistan under Soviet influence because they had begun to uh, try to break away. And uh, the Soviets stayed in Afghanistan for almost 10 years throughout the 1980s and were never able to totally subdue the Afghanis, partially because the Americans supplied Afghanistan with weapons as an example of containment in the 1980s. But this uh, damaged morale, the fact that the Soviet Union, uh, they, they saw themselves as being unable to defeat what should have been a far inferior opponent, and uh, it ended up costing them a lot of money in the end as well. So uh, the final leader of the Soviet Union was Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, who took power in 1985, and he was a reformer. He uh, had been um, preceded by several guys, mainly very old people, who were very hardline communists and had no interest in changing at all. But Gorbachev uh, knew that he had to do something because the, co the uh, country was suffering so badly. And so he began to reform uh, how the Soviets did things. And there were two particular policies he advocated. One was called glasnost, which is Russian for openness, and that's the end of government censorship of the media so people could openly criticize the government and make suggestions on ways to make things better, whereas before that had not been allowed. The other is called perestroika, which loosely translates as restructuring. And this is where the Soviet government's workings and the economy were changed. Um, previously, as is the case in communist countries, all the industry was owned by the government. It's called it a command economy. But Mikhail Gorbachev began to allow some private ownership of businesses and industries in the country, instead of having everything owned by the government, which is a pretty big change. Um, at the time, but uh, as you will see, uh, people began to demand even more change as uh, the 1980s went on. So, uh, Glasnost leads to Soviet satellite nations uh, in Eastern Europe beginning to criticize the 
uh, Soviet government more and more, and you begin to see more movements against being ruled by the Soviets. And a lot of those satellite countries eventually, and by the end of 1980s, will uh, have, have cast off communism. Um, one example of that would be in Poland, where there was a movement of uh, shipping yard workers, uh, led by a guy named Lech Walesa, who you see uh, in the picture there speaking to a solidarity rally in the 1980s. And uh, through the influence of solidarity and getting people behind their movement to uh, oppose communism, communism fell in Poland in 1989, and then the next year in 1990, like Walesa was actually elected uh, president of Poland. Um, as a little personal note, I actually met like Valesa a few years ago. He was the commencement speaker at graduation at UNC Charlotte, and um, I met him backstage as he was getting ready to go out, and uh, he is an enormous guy. He's really, really big, but uh, very nice also. Uh, East Germany. Uh, the Berlin Wall came down in November of 1989. Um, you might be wondering, what is the Berlin Wall? The Berlin Wall was erected by the Soviets and by the East Germans in 1961. Because, as you may recall, Berlin is located entirely in East Germany, but West Berlin was controlled uh, by democratic and free market forces because it was occupied by the Americans and the British and the French after World War II. So what was happening is people that lived in East Germany were going into West Berlin and then from there defecting or leaving and going to uh, Western Europe that wasn't communist. And so to stop that from happening, because it was happening in very large numbers, um, the Soviets put a wall up around West Berlin in 1961 to keep their own citizens from escaping. And so West Berlin, even though they had, I mean, they had like rail and road access to West Germany, um, West Berlin was pretty much imprisoned for 28 years until the Berlin Wall comes down in 1989. Um, that symbolized the end of East Germany. And in 1990, it was official, West Germany and East Germany uh, came together, and it was called the reunification um, of a single German state. So all of this does not bode well for the Soviet Union as they continue to lose power and influence. Most of the Soviet republics started to break away from the Soviet Union. That's not the satellite nations like Poland and all of those in Eastern Europe, but... Um, the countries like Kazakhstan, the Ukraine, Belarus, they had been countries before the war or before the Russian Revolution and, and uh, had been part of the Soviet Union for a long time, began to finally um, break away. And Gorbachev was almost overthrown in a coup in 1991, which made him even weaker than he already was because of the collapsing of the government. And in December of 1991, Gorbachev realized that he could not any longer maintain power, and he resigned the presidency or the, the leadership of the Soviet Union. And at that point, the Soviet Union ceased to exist. Uh, in Moscow at the Kremlin, where the government is headquartered, the uh, Soviet flag came down and the Russian flag went up. So it was almost immediate um, that that had happened. And again, similar things happened throughout Eastern Europe in the late 1980s, and in most cases it was peaceful uh, in the satellite nations, the exception being Romania, where President Nikolai Ceausescu and his wife were uh, arrested, put on trial, and executed uh, on Christmas Day, 1989. So what happens after the fall of the Soviet Union? Again, it breaks up into 15 independent countries, which you actually see listed there on the right. Uh, Russia still obviously being the biggest one, and it was led by Boris Yeltsin, who had been a critic of Gorbachev and the communist government throughout the 1980s. Under Yeltsin, more industries begin to privatize where, you know, it's not communist anymore, so it's going to be privately owned businesses. It's going to be more like uh, things are here in the United States. But despite all that, the economy remained really, really bad throughout the 1990s because unemployment was high, because these industries were being run very badly and didn't have a lot of money because the government wasn't supporting them anymore. So things weren't very good, and the same was true for a lot of the former Soviet republics. Um, sometimes that was just uh, manifested in the form of financial difficulties, but in some cases, like in Georgia, there were really, really bad civil wars that uh, led to destruction and, and widespread death as well. That will do it for our look at the Cold War. Uh, be sure to reference this video in preparation for your assessment, and as always, ask your teacher if you have any questions. Cheers!